So, welcome. Um, my name is Sam Harlow. I am the online learning librarian for UNCG University Libraries. Uh, this is our webinar series called Research and Applications. So in this series, different librarians cover topics on UNCG Libraries resources and research tools. These 30-minute webinars are recorded in WebEx meetings where we are now and placed on the library webpage through YouTube where that's the, where they become closed captions and they don't have participant data available for the public. So I'm going to drop the link to all of our webinars in there and they also contain applicable links to like slides and things like that uh, when necessary. So while this webinar is going on, please mute yourself by clicking on the audio icon next to your name to turn it red. Um, but also feel free to turn your audio back on at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation. Uh, if you don't have a microphone, you also can just participate through chat. If you have questions throughout the webinar, you can put them in chat and I will monitor them uh, for the host and for the presenter and then uh, she will cover them at the end or while there is breaks in the webinar. So if there's technical issues, you can email me on the back end and we'll try to work through it. But also remember that this session is being recorded. Um, so I'm dropping my email in the chat as well. So um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. But this session is being hosted by UNCG Libraries Health Science Librarian Leah Leininger, and she will be presenting on New Pub Med. Leah, are you ready? Absolutely. Thanks for that lovely introduction. So um, thank you for coming. And for those who watch this later, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so the URL for these slides, in case you're interested in getting a copy, is go.uncg.edu slash npf20. These slides are adapted from training materials provided by the NNLM. So if you would like, um, you are absolutely free to customize the slides for your own uses. Just try to cite the original source, and that actually is the National Library of Medicine. So today I'm going to talk about PubMed, which is a free online tool provided by the National Library of Medicine, which you can use to find published biomedical and health sciences research. I'm going to do a little bit of introduction first. It's, we're going to be um, going through some slides, and then I'm going to go away from the slides to do a live demonstration. And of course, if you want to see some of that um, afterwards, we'll have the recording as well as the slides, and I will be covering how to get help. So what is PubMed? Um, it's the National Library of Medicine's free authoritative database of more than 30 million citations in biomedicine and health. So it has a specific focus on collecting original scientific research. You can use PubMed to help familiarize yourself with a new topic, and also you can use it to take a deep dive into a wide variety of topics. What's in PubMed? This kind of information um, tends to be useful to people that I usually work with. So just a little overview. Um, the biggest part of PubMed is called Medline. Those are um, records for biomedical articles that are really detailed. They have subject headings on them that, that address um, which population uh, was covered in the article, if there was a health condition or a health status. Um, they also have terms for substances or chemicals that might have been addressed in the article, genetic information, other terms. So these Medline records are really rich and really detailed, um, great indexing. PubMed also has brief records and links over to free full text articles from PubMed Central. Um, and so those are, um, that PubMed Central is the open access article repository for the National Library of Medicine. So those records tend to be very brief. Um, some of those journals have gone through the really rigorous process of applying for Medline indexing. So some of those um, PubMed Central article records, a few of them will actually be more detailed. They'll have mesh terms and have a lot more on them. But um, many of them are links out to the free full text, which is fantastic. And I will be talking, of course, about how to get full text as a UNCG um, affiliated person. And I give a little link here um, to the About PubMed page in case you want to go um, into more detail and research what is in PubMed. One thing that comes up frequently or, or that is sometimes a surprise to people is that PubMed includes both peer-reviewed journals and trade journals. It does not have a search filter for peer review status. So you should not assume that everything in PubMed has been peer-reviewed. 
it's all very high quality, but um, you know, it, some of it will be trade or professional oriented. So the new PubMed was launched in the fall. It has the same article records that are in the legacy PubMed, but the search engine has been improved. Um, both versions are currently available. The legacy PubMed will be discontinued at some point, but the NLM has said that they'll give advance notice when this is going to happen. We're just starting to do some training now at this point about um, the new PubMed, both to get folks ready to be using it just because there's going to be a, a switch over, but also because there's some exciting new features in the new PubMed. And the way that you can get to the new PubMed through the UNCG libraries, if you remember um, the big red search box that's on the library homepage and many other um, pages in the library website, you click on the databases list to get a list of all of the databases that we have access to. And on that page, you can search PubMed. And on our library website, this is what we're, what we're calling our link into the new PubMed, PubMed new interface for 2020. So at this point, I'm going to click over, and I'm not sure if everybody followed me on that. I'm just going to pause for just a minute and say, are people following me okay in terms of what just basic, what PubMed is and um, how to get to it, library homepage, databases, um, type PubMed up here to look through the hundreds of databases that we get you to, and then here. All right. I'm seeing some I'm with you's in chat. That's fantastic. So I'm going to open this up. First thing you'll notice is that there is linking between the new version of PubMed and the older version of PubMed, this banner across the top of the page. So if you just love, love, love the old version, you can click here and, um, to go back to use it. Um, and also, you will notice a beautiful new search page. So we get the basic search. We still have many of the things that you might have used in the past and you've appreciated, such as the MeSH database, the, the guide to those subject terms, um, clinical queries, and of course, there are user guides here. And there are some new things here, which is a little bit exciting. On this landing page, we see lists of trending articles, which is a little exciting to me. Um, in terms of searching, the National Library of Medicine says just type some terms. You don't have to get fancy. You don't have to use um, ands and ors, um, asterisks and quotation marks. You're free to, but if I'm interested in researching um, maybe caffeine and cognition, you know, is there a connection? I'm just going to type the substance I'm interested in and maybe the health status or, or the status that I'm interested in. And then I hit search, and on my results page, um, you can see up here at the very top, it will say how many results I got. Um, the default sort is by best match, um, so it's doing a really nice job of, I think, finding out what it thinks is relevant and putting them at the top, but you can click here to resort that if you want to. Oops, click on best match, okay. Um, other things that you might notice here are um, one of the additions to um, the new PubMed is citation suggestions. So you click under an article record and you will see um, that it will suggest a citation for a references list and you can switch between AMA, APA, and a couple of other styles. Other things that you'll see, there is a um, there's a graph that shows trends for um, publications that it's found by year. You can click in the little box next to it to expand this if you want a, a closer view. You could use this slider to actually filter your search results, or um, you could do that down below. Other filters that come up are text availability. These um, free full text and full text those filters are there for members of the public who are not affiliated with a big university that has a lot of journal subscriptions, that has an interlibrary loan service. So it's, um, these are really going to limit your results way down and um, only show you some of them. So if you are a current UNCG student or faculty member, I would suggest ignoring these limits so that you can find out about the articles. And then I'll show you in a minute how you click into them to get a link to full text. Some of the other filters 
kind of exciting. I will say um, associated data. When I first saw this in the new PubMed, I was hopping up and down thinking, oh my gosh, data sets. This is going to limit me down to just the articles that have data sets. So far, I haven't seen that. Um, associated data in the results I've seen tends to be a little bit more metadata about a research study. For instance, this will limit results down to ones that maybe have a record over in the clinicaltrials.gov um, website with information about recruitment and so on and so forth, um, which is kind of nice to have. But that's um, what I've seen in terms of associated data. And of course, we get article types. This is um, the same as in the older PubMed. And I usually suggest that when people are starting on their topic, that they click to look at maybe just review articles to get sort of an overview. But of course, definitely your choice. Um, and here are some handy year limits. Um, if you want to pick one of those, um, we get age groups, and there are additional filters in here. There are a lot of different types of um, filters, and I actually do use the age filter quite a bit. That's why it's showing up on my screen. The first time you go into New PubMed, you might not see those. So you might come into this additional filters area, click on age, and click to select the um, age filters that you're interested in. Um, the language is important too. It's nice to have that English language limit. And we saw a pretty decent list of article types as search limits up there, but there are even more. So you can um, click on any of these that you want to to show, and that will um, add it to the list of filters that are being displayed. And then if you want to select one to limit your results down, you just put a check in front of it. That's, that's sort of like the old PubMed. All right, so I'm going to pause for just a minute. Any questions at this point about a basic search and looking at the um, search results screen? All right, so um, I will say one thing that some people like to do is sometimes they like to um, temporarily save results. So if you think you're going to be doing a couple of searches and you want to keep track of maybe this article and this one but not that one, um, you can check in front of an article and send it to the clipboard. In the new PubMed, I feel like it's a little bit hidden. It's You check the article, and then you have to click on these ellipses, these three dots, send to clipboard. And that will create a clipboard link underneath the search box, and that is where you go to view the items that you set aside. And as I kind of implied, these will stay in... You, the clipboard area um, in this browser on this computer for up to eight hours. And another thing that sometimes people like to do is sometimes they come up with the perfect search, but they don't want to be coming in to redo the search every single week. They just want to find out about new results. So um, there is an option for you to create a search alert if you'd like to. So if you've run a search and you think, well, I want to get new results emailed to me, periodically, whether it's every week, every month, you can click on Create Alert, and you would then need to click Login to create a free account with NCBI. And it's quick and easy to do, but that's just something that some people are interested in. Now, in terms of getting the full text shortcuts to the UNCG um, full text, you click on the article title to get to the abstract page. And you'll notice up here in the top right corner are some full text links. So sometimes these links are from commercial publishers like Elsevier or Wiley or Sage. And they really are there um, sort of trying to, to sell an article. So they might get you right to the article, but they might stop and get you to um, maybe a page that asks you to pay $50 or something. Just don't ever pay for an article while you're a UNCG student. Um, I usually tell people in PubMed, if you see a PMC free full text link, that's kind of the fastest, easiest way to get to um, full text because that's going to be going out of that free article repository. It's one click away. You get the article right there, um, and you can look around to, to get the PDF to download to your computer and save. If you don't see free full text, um, this UNCG logo um, should be appearing 
in your results if you came in through a PubMed link on our library website. And you can click on UNCG to see, do we have access to it? So this is our link resolver. It has searched um, our subscriptions and some free sources to see if we have the article. And if it finds a source, it will give a viewful text link. Sometimes it um, sees that we get the article from multiple sources, and you'll see lots of these links. So this is sort of how you, you get into full text. And if you have a hard time during this process at all, if you get questions, this chat with a librarian is a really good option. So if I click on here, you'll see a little chat box opens up. And you can say, hi, you know, I'm trying to get to the full text of this article. I'm getting a ticker, or I'm not sure which link to click on, and they'll help you. Now, on our end, when we're staffing chat, we do not know exactly which article you're on. So you might need to copy and paste the title and the, the, the um, journal information in here. Um, and of course, if you'd rather talk by phone, you could just click other ways to, to get in that way and ask for help um, using your voice. So that's just the super quick um, getting full text. Um, every now and then you might see that, um, you know, you've gotten into PubMed articles and for some reason, maybe there's not a UNCG logo. Um, during the switchover, this kind of in intermittent, sometimes the UNCG is here, sometimes it's not. That, that actually did come up several times in the fall. So um, if you ever get into that situation, of course, no, do not pay for the article. <laughs> Just um, copy the article title and come out to the library homepage. And this WorldCat Discovery gets a feed of records from PubMed. And it knows about many of the articles that we have. So um, if you paste an article title in here, um, it will usually find a match. And if we own it, it will say held by UNCG. And you will then get kind of that same list of view full text. So that's just another way to get into full text, just in case um, something isn't quite isn't quite right if you don't see the UNCG. Um, any questions about that? So um, you'll notice on this page, of course, we get the site um, suggestion again. If we scroll down a little bit, we get an abstract. Um, we can keep scrolling down the page. The page is actually pretty long. Um, one thing that's good to know is that all of these links on the right-hand side, they're just navigation links to go down the page. There's so much here that you can click into one of the sections of the page to see what PubMed has to say about this article. And one of the things that I like about this um, new PubMed, I mean, there are lots of things, but it pulls out the figures, if there are some, and, and puts them right up here. And of course, just like the old PubMed, it will um, try to suggest similar articles in case you're interested. I always like seeing that kind of a feature. And we see the references um, for this article. And this happens to be an article um, that is indexed for Medline. So if we, if we um, scroll to this section, we're seeing that there are medical subject headings, which is really nice. Um, so if I wanted to get a little more specific, I could click on these to run a search. You can see associated data, grant support, there's even down here under medical, um, Medline Plus is a consumer health website. So if you want just some general public consumer patient level information, you can click out there. Now, if I want to adapt my search a little bit, you probably noticed that I got such a huge pile of results um, from my initial keyword search, just caffeine and cognition. This is partially because um, PubMed is just looking for my terms in the title or abstract, but also it does a little bit of translation and it kind of tries to, to figure out what I mean. So it will search for a lot, a lot of stuff. And sometimes all those are, results aren't quite on topic. But if I'm in a result that, that actually is on topic and it's indexed or midline, it's got these nice subject headings, I can click on them. So I'm gonna click on substance, caffeine, and I'm going to choose Add to Search this time because that's going to paste this up here in my search box. And it's going to let me add more terms before the search is actually launched. 
and I'm going to go to cognition and I'll add that to the search. And it got back to this very same result. <laughs> I'll take out the subhead. Very same result. I'll keyword it. Sorry, y'all. You can tell when I go off script because this is what happens. So, <laughs> going to articles about cognition as a major topic and caffeine. I am going to uncheck associated data. I'm not really caring about that. I just wanted to show off that that was a cool new limit. And I see many, many more results. All right. So, um, as you can see, there are lots of new features in the new PubMed from the, um, from the citing feature to some new things that show up in the abstract. There are also some oldies but goodies, like many of the filters are the same, the link to full text um, also the same. There is a clipboard, but um, it is a little bit hidden. You have to kind of click and then look underneath the ellipses dot 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 there. I'm going to pause one more time to ask if anybody has any questions yet. All right, so I have blazed through many of the topics that I wanted to cover. So I am going to get a little bit exciting now, and I am going to go to the advanced search. So this link is underneath the initial search box and also um, to the search box that shows your results underneath it. So this lets you, um, this advanced search builder lets you be a little, a little more selective about how you search. You could search just within specific fields, like search just titles and abstracts, which is kind of interesting. And you don't actually have to do a search on this page. This is also the place where you come to see a history of searches that you've run in this session. And you can see I've been searching with somebody else this morning on a very different topic. I like this search history for several reasons. Um, one, if I'm not seeing the kind of results that I want to see as a librarian, I get really interested in these details. I can click on that little arrow to see what exactly did it do. It actually stemmed my search, which is neat. It searched for caffeine, caffeinated. Caffeine, it really tried. It tried several variations of this word. Caffeines, which doesn't make sense, but I'm so glad that it tried. Um, and also, another reason why I like the search history, and this is mainly for graduate students and the researchers who are um, trying to really keep an audit trail. Um, you can download a a list of the searches that were run in this session, and it comes out as a CSV file. And I don't think just on day-to-day -day searching, most people need to do this, but if you really do need to show what you typed, how many results you got, if you need to demonstrate what your search process is, um, this download search history is really handy. And I've got a bunch of um, students in a couple of different classes who are using this kind of feature very heavily, both in PubMed and in other databases. All right, so I am just about ready to um, go back to the slides while I'm looking live at PubMed. Any questions yet? Okay, I am going to let's see if I can see if I can get back here. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Hold Google Slides. I just love it. All right. 
flip back through here and we'll talk about, of course, some of the most important things, which are learning more and getting help. Um, all of the links at the bottom of that PubMed landing page um, include an FAQ and user guide from the NOM, so I link to these. But also I'm going to say that you can um, reach out to your UNCG liaison librarian. So on the library homepage, you can click on research guides by subject and um, click on the subject or department that you're affiliated with if you want to learn more. Oh, okay, I see a question. Um, so let me address this. What are the save and favorites buttons on the right side of an abstract? Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, so I see the favorites. This um, will save a record to your free NCBI account if you want to keep track of records. For instance, you want to come back and you want to um, you want to be able to see, oh, these were some citations that were super useful that I saw last week or last month. Um, and it is pretty easy to set up a, a that free account. You just click login to do it. Um, and I think I'm going to click out. So I'm guessing, yeah, this is maybe the, maybe the save button that you were um, thinking about. So above the result list, um, there is a save button. So you can pick which results you want to save. And essentially, it is going to save the article descriptions that you're seeing, not necessarily full text, but article descriptions in a couple of different formats. It'll give you a choice. So if you want to get a, um, a list of, of results, basically, this is one way to do it. Now, if you're, um, if you're a citation management software user, like I am, I happen to use Zotero to save and organize um, results like these. Um, in Zotero, there actually is a little command for your browser that you click on when you see a page that has citations. So if you're in Zotero, you, you don't need to worry about this save option. You would just get to a page that has some results that you like, and you would click the Z. But that is an amazing topic. That's actually an entire other sort of session. I would say for sure watch one of our, um, if you're interested in citation management, um, Zotero specifically, um, contact your liaison librarian or come to one of our workshops on that. And email is going to do the same kind of thing. It will email the citation information that PubMed has to you. So that was a really good question. Any last questions before we wrap up? I'm not seeing any yet. I'm going to start turning it over to Sam in case there are any final words you want to say. Thank you. So um, y'all are welcome to um, unmute yourself. I unmuted someone. Uh, I muted someone as they came in, so I'll unmute you. Uh, if you are, you're now unmuted. Um, Lisa, if you want to unmute yourself, you can. Um, so just as y'all are, if y'all think of any questions or want to say anything to Leah, I will say the next uh, webinar in this series is Tuesday, March 10th. It's a lot different than this one. It's on managing archival research photographs with Trophy. Uh, so about working in archives, you know, getting photographs from archives. So if any of y'all do research in that, that's our next one coming up on March 10th at 11 a.m. We also run another webinar series on online learning and innovation, and the next one in that is on Thursday, March 12th at 2 p.m. on creating self-scoring assessments using Qualtrics by Rob Owens, uh, an ITC for the Bryan School. So I'll drop um, the home page in here again. You can get to both of those webinar series from the tabs, sign up. Uh, they're in here, uh, WebEx. As well. So are there any uh, questions? That was my only announcement. Um, since you mentioned Zotero, can I ask one question about that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, it doesn't make a difference if you save the abstract versus the full text to Zotero? Um, 
do you mean in terms of how much information you'll have access to later? Uh, yeah, is just one better practice than the other? Well, good question. A lot of people like to save the full text along with the abstract. That way they have everything in one place. So if you do like to do that, then you would want to keep clicking, not just save results from PubMed that's just the abstract. You would want to click through to full text to a page that actually has a PDF on it. Um, the one thing that comes up with that is Zotero is Framian software. So um, if you want to sync what Zotero is saving from your own computer into your free Zotero cloud account, it will save as many citations and abstracts as you want, but there is a storage size limit for attachments like PDFs. So if you're planning to go sync and go from computer to computer, the storage amount might be a limitation for you if you're attaching PDFs to everything. Okay. Okay. That was helpful. Thank you. And the library does have a guide to Zotero. I hate to, I always do this. I'm sorry, but, um, I dropped it in the chat, Leah, in case. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. yeah Sam, it. yeah. Sam put a link to the library guide to Zotero that has basic information and also a, um, recorded webinar like this one. Okay, I thought of one more thing about PubMed. So um, I went and I have a bookmark for the new one, but I realized that I didn't see a full text for an article because I'm not logged in mm -hmm. as a UNCG student. So really the quickest way to get to PubMed is from this library page that you're showing now. So this, um, this is the way to go if you want to have a UNCG full text link. Yeah, you, you go to library homepage, and then you, you type PubMed to look through all of the databases that we have, and then you pick the new one. Okay. But if you are looking at results, like I mentioned earlier, and you're thinking, I just want the full text, if you happen to not see the UNCG logo, just copy the article title and, and paste it into WorldCat Discovery. I know that's not as easy um, because if you're getting full text for a lot of articles from PubMed, you want to see that UNCG logo. But if something comes up, you can, you can paste article titles in there. Is that answer? Okay. Uh, okay, well, that's it for me. Thank you so much. This was very helpful. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Thanks. I work with kinesiology and uh, public health and community therapy for recreation, and this was really helpful for me. I'm definitely going to send everyone this recording. Make them watch it. <laughs> so. All right. Yay. So, great. Everybody have a good day. Um, so great. We're right at, uh, you know, 30 minutes, a little bit over, but thank you all for coming. Please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you, Leah, for hosting. Um, enjoy your snow day if y'all are local. Um, and uh, Great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.